Welcome to the Tied Together podcast, where we feature everyday people doing extraordinary things. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share so others can join in on the conversation too. If you've never heard of Aaliyah Abraham, you'll be glad you tuned in today. Aaliyah has taken her background in music theory, studies in intellectual property, and genuine love of community and used it to build up her hometown in Queens, New York. Her company, Prototype Music, provides instruction to the youth in art and music business, while also nurturing the youth dance team in a local family shelter. Her newest endeavor, the Black Resource Network, has grown exponentially in just one year. She has been featured on multiple news stations, radio platforms, and most recently in Essence Magazine. Please welcome the amazing Aaliyah Abraham. Thank you so much. That was an awesome introduction, Keisha. You certainly did your work. You did your homework. Good. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. You're very welcome. And thank you for everything that you're doing in the community. That being my home, I am really glad to see somebody taking on that that effort and that work that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So let's start at the tail end, maybe, of the Black Resource Network. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, The Black Resource Network is a space for Black people in Queens to network and share resources. Um, But we also include uh, people that work in Queens because they spend a lot of their time in Queens. It's also a way for people who might have moved out of Queens to still stay connected to their hometown. And we kind of, you know, have no limits to what we discuss and what we try to help each other with. The only criteria is to be Black and connected to Queens. So we talk about, of course, um, employment. We talk about, you know, uh, politics. We a large effort, of course, is supporting small businesses, buying Black, and specifically buying Black and local. I think a lot of our effort goes into that. Um, We talk about, of course, finance. We support youth entrepreneurs and youth uh, organizations and civic organizations and on and on and on and on and on. We also have subgroups where we have a book club and we have a vegan group and we have a fitness group and we have a, you know, we're starting a travel club. So, you know, we we are a large um, group of people that are almost 10,000 of us now. And we talk about things together as a group and then we kind of break off into our interests. That's dope. That's so much. Yeah, so, it, it is. It is. It, it's it a works. lot. It's what? It works. Yes. Yes. I see. You know, I'm a part of the group and I see all the things that you are doing. I'm curious, how did this even come about? Sure. Um, it started because my friend Dane, who I kind of started this with, he had an idea. I mean, I guess it started a lot of different ways, but the, 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 the start point was my friend Dane Chong. He had an idea where he wanted to start something called Jamaica Avenues. So Jamaica Avenues, Jamaica Avenues, right? Uh, and we talked about it a couple years ago. Well, yeah, we should do it. We wanted like a... Uh, you know, something you could print out, put in all the stores, feature the business owners. Um, But then we never did it. You know, ideas come and go. And then um, I'm also a member of Black Long Island. I have to give them credit for inspiring this as well, that I was always in that group. And I was like, oh, you know, I need to find a Black plumber in Long Island, you know, so they put that up and everybody come in. And I'm like, wow, you know, Queens needs one of this. So I just thought back to his idea on really helping Queens businesses get exposure. And I hit him up like, hey, you know, let's start that idea that you had. Um, But, you know, let's let's do a version of this and a little bit of that and just make it for Queens. And then here we are. That was only last year. And 10,000 people later, here we are. I know. I know. How do you feel that it's been so well received? Um, I didn't expect it. You know, I just, I I had an idea and I finally just took the first step and I did it. You know, I was already pretty involved in the community before I started this. And I know that kind of helped the growth so much because I was already going to my civic meetings and my merchants association meetings and my NAACP. And so when I just decided to just put everybody together, I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. You know, so there was a lot of years of of participation before I got to this point. But no, I did not expect this. (laughs) Because you've been awarded by the senator? Uh, Recently? Yeah. Actually, our biggest, yes, we've absolutely been awarded by um, Senator Comrie. But Mm -hmm. um, more recently, as uh, maybe two weeks ago, uh, the borough president made August 10th uh, borough-wide Black Resource Network Day. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? That's yeah, very dope. Yeah, who gets Black Resource <laughs> Network Day August 10th every year. So we got to do something cool. Yes. 
Yes, that's amazing. Yeah. So I do want to talk about your history before Black Resource Network, but I still want to know why the emphasis on Black? because it's what's needed you know there's there's a problem that we need to address that clearly there's a certain population that for centuries have been treated a certain way just because of the color of their skin and um we need to come together and do what we can we need other people to realize that as well we need allies mm -hmm. um, but we have to kind of organize and talk with each other and fix some of those problems so i wanted to bring everybody together in a safe space that we can um talk together yeah, and I, I see that happening. For a group that's so large, you all really do a good job of working together. Um, a lot of times you can get five people in the room and three will disagree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are doing a wonderful job of just working together and pushing those goals forward. So I do commend you with that. So yeah, to, 10, to, people, we don't have too much drama. I can't say no. anything crazy has happened. For the most part, everybody has a common goal. I love that. I love that. Um, to go back a little bit. So I want to talk about Quinfest. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. Sure. The Queens Youth Music Festival. Um, uh, it started because I had this other, I have this other group uh, called Prototype Music. And the purpose of that group was to, you know, mentor, develop and showcase youth artists, primarily in Queens. I'm super Queens, everything I do. I get it. Queens. <laughs> but um you know queens needs it um so we we started that and that was with my friend rodney um just because we were already artists we were already performing artists and then they were just younger people coming up that um were just curious you know how do i start how do i write this song or how do i shoot this music video and we we're like all right come on so you know we just started writing songs for them and helping them shoot videos and you know taking them to the studio and then you do all of this great stuff and then you're like, okay, well, what are we going to do with it now? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to create um, an opportunity, a, a space to showcase these youth on a higher level, something higher than their school recital or, or something like that, something where they felt like, nah, this is a, this is a top concert, you know? Yeah. Um, and we just took our own money and we, you know, we would fly out kids from LA or Nickelodeon wow. and, and the TikTok stars and Musical.ly stars and just have them perform with these kids. And it just, you know, it was so well received as well. Our first two years we were at Amazora, then we went to St. John's and then last year we were at City Field. So it did grow um, quite a bit over a few years. This year we're kind of, you know, trying to figure out uh, what to do um, with everything that's happening. You know, no concerts are happening, but we still keep in touch with all of the kids and still try to keep something going. Yeah, I see the, the growth as a pattern in, in what you put together. And I think it's amazing when you when you put something out there that people genuinely love, they just flock to it, Yeah, you know? Yeah, and yeah, when yeah. your heart's in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you just get people that understand your vision um, as well as you do, you know, and everybody just works together. One band, one, band, one sound and, and puts the work in. Absolutely. And so you were an artist at one point as well. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. So did you have an Aaliyah Abraham in your life when you were an artist? I did not. And I wish I did. Um, I did not. You know, I did everything pretty blindly and trial and error and it cost a lot of money. <laughs> um, so my hope is that I can help it not cost as much money for another child. Yeah. Um, another young person, even another young adult. Um, so that, you know, that's just what I try to do. Anything I know you want to know, anything I can help with, I'm, you know, I'm going to help. Absolutely. Especially if you're Black and from Queens. <laughs> Can't forget that. <laughs> but I understand, you know, because we're from the same area and if there's not, there's not always that hand to pull you up, you know? And if you could reach any level of success and turn around and pull somebody back up the way you wish you had, that's always very commendable. And it's my goal. And I can tell that it's your goal in life as well. So I think that's pretty dope. Yes. We, I, I just, I don't, we always have to start from scratch, right? So right. if I can just help somebody start from maybe level two, I, I you know, that's only, I'm trying um, and I'll just put you on my back as much as I can. And we don't have to always start from zero. Right. Um, so that's just kind of what we have to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So are you still making music? 
Um, no, but you know, people are trying to just just come out with another say goes, come out with another. You never know, but that's mm-hmm. not exactly what my focus is right now. Right. So I want to talk about um the dream that you had then versus the dream that you have now. So I'm gonna assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that at one point your dream was to be an artist. Is that right? Um I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. mean my dream. I can go back even further. My dream, I think my dream is to help my community. It kind of always was, Mm -hmm. which is when I was an artist, I started doing my own events rather quickly to put on other artists before I was even doing anything with myself. You know, so I think that dream was bigger. But yes, of course, I wanted to um be an artist but I was more motivated on being together to gather with my community right and together and do something I think that was a much larger dream of mine right and I ask you that because um for me at one point in my life I wanted to be a real estate mogul mm-hmm. that was what I wanted mm-hmm. um, I loved going to look at houses I loved looking at them in magazines and I wanted to just be in the field of real estate Um, as I got older, I realized that I did not want to do that. And it was a little jarring. It was like, but, but that was my dream forever. Mm -hmm. So what do I do now? So I'm wondering for you, what was it like when you said, no, I'm not going to do that at least right now. And then turn the page to something else. How did that? Yes, yes. yes. Um, I realized I didn't want to be an artist when, you have to have a certain type of personality that I just don't think I have. You have to just give all of yourself and be just very exposed. And I, I'm just not that type of person. And I knew that. Like, I have the technical part, um, but I don't have the, the, the artist part. And I just wasn't willing to become that person. Um, so then it had to, I had to come to a point where it was like, listen, maybe that's not for you and that's okay but maybe you learned a lot of skills um during that that can transition you to the other part of your life which it did um so i don't regret any of it i'm okay with um changing and expanding and discovering new parts of yourself Mm -hmm. um it was disappointing but not for very long because i picked up something else that was you know similar enough rather quickly yeah i think as we get older we realize that it's okay to change um because initially when you're first getting out into the world um it's like okay i know what i want i'm going after that and then when it's time to change it's like but wait what happened you know and then you learn that it's okay and you can grow and move on from it and the place the space that i'm at in my life now i realize that all those things were necessary to get to this part right here you know it what and it's not necessarily a, a change it's more a foundation stone you know so I think that's dope and you you discussed or just said about discovering new parts of yourself what's a part that you think that you discovered when you changed from artist Aaliyah and then expanded on philanthropist Aaliyah I discovered um that I am much happier when it's not about me. Like I don't like to be the center. Um, and I discovered that I can, I like doing more for other things than for myself. And that was the problem with being an artist, like talking about me and I'm so great. I'm just not comfortable with that. I mean, I love me. No, that's fine. But I know that that a career that that's the focus, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. And I'm more comfortable supporting. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's something that I I discovered, you know, after my career as a performing artist. Yeah. What was the hardest part, you would say, uh, making that transition? Looking back on all the money I spent, Mm -hmm. and like all of the other things I could have been doing with that money. I think the finance part is, is, huge uh you know when you're trying to build something for yourself and you're like i could have done so much why did i think i could do that i could do so many other things um but that's okay yep that's okay i think the hardest part for me is not even me it's other people who are just like so you're not gonna come out with an album again i'm like 
no. <laughs> you know, people don't want to accept the change and you can't be too mad at them because if you, if, you know, especially with music, like if you like my music, I can't tell you, you know, no, I'm not doing that. You know, I don't want to do that. Right. But having other people accept the new you kind of is a, is a challenge as well. It is. It is. Because once you become happy with the, the new version of yourself, you want everybody else to come on board. And sometimes they're like, but I really like those Aaliyah. Yeah, what's wrong with her? Where is she? When is she coming back? Right, right. So jumping back into your investment into Queens, New York, what are some of the things you hope to see come about in the community as you move forward? Sure. I'd love to see a... Another, I won't say the only because there is a Black Spectrum Theater. I'd like to see another um, large art and culture institution. I'd love to see a significant business center. I'd love to see um, just space, entrepreneur space and artist space um, for us in our community that is controlled by us. Um, so that's something that I'd, I'd love to put some people together and work on. I need a test kitchen in there. I need like a podcast space. I need just something dope for us. I think that a lot of amazing things come out of Queens with so much less. Imagine if you just give us something um, <laughs> or we give ourselves um, this thing because we do have the power to do it ourselves. Um, so that's something I want to see. Yeah, it, it seems to me, it comes off to me that you have a lot of awesome ideas just beaming around in your head <laughs> and you go out and you execute them. It's not that you're just having these ideas and you sit on them and you don't do anything. You're going out to execute them. Where do you th think you got this thought pattern from to, to dream so big? You know, I do not like to have an idea and don't do it like it's it's not something that I've worked on or that I make it a point to do. Like I have anxiety if I have an idea and I don't do it or I say I'm going to do something and I don't do it. That's just my personality. So there's not much I can do about that. You know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night like, why did you say you were going to go to her party and you now you're not, trying, you know, so it. It, it causes me stress if I don't do what I said I'm going to do. So I can't take too much uh, credit for that. That's just how I was built. Mm -hmm. But why do you think that you're capable of it in the first place? Where does that, where does that drive come from? Not everybody believes that they can dream up something and then do it. Where would you say that I, even comes from? I have to give credit to my super supportive parents. Um, that's just kind of always how we were. And I guess that's, I, ha I have to look back and say, that's why, like, I, if I have an idea and I go to either one of my parents, my mother or my father, and I say, this is what I want to do. All right, let's go. You want to be a baker? Let's go to Macy's tomorrow. Let's pick out this mixer. Let's get you that hat that I see them wearing on TV. Let's get you <laughs> an apron. Like, that's the way my parents were always. Um, and they don't let you falter um, with your ideas. So I guess I just continued that on my own. I mean, they're, they're still super supportive people, but yeah. just as an adult, mm -hmm. um, I just always kind of maintain that um, yeah. drive. So I have to give them credit. Absolutely. My parents are, are very similar. Anything I tell them that I'm doing, they, they really believe that I can do it. They're yeah, like, you they know, believe. What, are you, what are you waiting on? Get it yeah. done. And I believe that in myself now because of the belief that they had in me. You know, I believed it as a child. Anything I would ask them, can I do this? Can I do that? Yeah. And they yeah. meant it. Yeah. I felt that they meant it. If they lied, they did a good job. Because yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I felt like they meant it. That's it. But I, I have to give them credit. Like, there's, there's not much. I couldn't do what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for the foundation for my parents. Yes. I agree. And I know that there are youth um, and adults that may not have the support system that you and I had. Um, I had a friend growing up, have, still have that friend growing up, whose parents did not speak life. They spoke defeat into her, um, told her what she wasn't capable of and what she'd never accomplish. And that can really just bring a person down for the rest of their lives yeah. if they let it. Yeah. How would you say someone should go about increasing their confidence, boosting, boosting their confidence, if that's what they're told, if they're not pushed on like you and I are. So uh, just so I understand your question, if there's something you want to do and you're not finding the support, is this the question? It, the question is really, if you have never really been told that you are capable, 
how do you find that inner strength and that inner belief to tell you, tell yourself that you're capable? Well, you have to start hanging out with different people. You have to find your space, find your network, find your group. There's a group out there for anything anyone wants to do um, to motivate you. Lord knows Facebook has a group for everything. And even beyond that space, um, find a group. There are people out there that want to see you do well, and you might not know them. Uh, they might not be your friends and family, but look for your support system because you deserve it. Um, and sometimes people discourage you, not because they don't want to see you do well, it's that they don't believe in themselves, so they can't believe in you, right? Or they're just afraid for you, and they're not used to anybody succeeding, so they, they want to prepare you for the failure that they expect, and that might not be your path. So go out there and find people who understand your vision and maybe even understand what you want to do. Cause sometimes you talk to people about concepts that they, they can't think of. So they don't understand how something like that is possible. So go find people that understand that space um, and, and talk to them and build with them and grow with them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've come upon multiple endeavors in my life that, you know, I didn't always get the support I was looking for. Thank God my parents are always supportive, but um you know, I try to instill that in people around me that, you know, you can, you're capable, you can do whatever you want to do. Now, I did have trouble finding my group for a long time. And I would hear things like, you know, work at what you're good at, and you'll find your group. Well, I didn't do that. I wanted to keep doing the things that I, I was normally doing, and hopefully find a group in there, or, you know, keep going to the supermarket, keep going shopping, keep going partying. If I'm not a, a party promoter, my circle's not at the party, you yes. know. Yes. So I had to actually start doing the things I like. Mm -hmm. I like reading. I like writing. I like networking. And then I started finding my circle. Um, and it can be hard to let go of old habits. So I, I agree with you. And I would definitely suggest go ahead and go find your circle some way, somehow. Your internet makes it so much easier now. You can find people. They're there. Yep. Yep. Well, I know your parents are proud of you, but what are you proud of yourself for? Ha 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 ha. Um... I am proud of myself for figuring out how to be happy and not changing who I was. Um, I feel like I, I'm very happy. This is probably the happiest I've, I've been in my entire life right oh, now. So excited um, for you. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm excited and I am happy that I was able to do that without having to change who I was or be who somebody else was and fake happiness. Like I, you know, people are happy for me and I am happy. Um, and that's just a, you know, that doesn't always happen. You know, uh, even going back to my parents, you know, there's other things that they might've wanted for me as supportive as they are and not mm -hmm. saying that they discouraged me, mm -hmm. but you know, there's things that they wanted me to do. And I tried to do those things to make them happy. Um, and it didn't, it didn't work. That, that, that wasn't, for me. And I could have just done that and, and, and follow that path. And I, you know, maybe I would have been okay. Maybe I wouldn't, but I think I found a sweet spot here that I'm happy and they're happy and everybody else is, is pretty happy. So I am proud that I was able to say, no, this is what I want to do. Um, and I, and I did it. That's good. That's good. Finding your happiness can be a challenge. Yes. Um, rather than pleasing other people, like you said, yes. because your happiness is not in that. Yeah. You know, you have to make it. And a lot of people, I won't say a lot of people, I'll say empaths like myself, like for other people to be happy. You like for them to feel good, but yeah. your happiness is lock, not locked in how they feel. It's locked in how you feel. And it's not selfish. Yes. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is better for everybody around you. Yes. Make sure that you're good. So I'm glad that you found that. Very glad. Yes, me too. Can you tell me about the share health? that you have going on. Oh yeah, and this is our last week of Share Health, at least for now, until we can secure some other stuff and we're working on it, um, but for now, yes. So Share Health is a program that we started in uh, maybe April or May. This was early on in the 
pandemic um, where we share anywhere from 500 to 800 boxes of fresh produce with the community mm -hmm. um, in an effort to just keep everybody healthy. You know, we've heard it over and over and over. We're fighting two pandemics where, you know, I mean, fighting two crises, you know, the pandemic and as well <laughs> as, you know, America kind of coming face to face with all the centuries of of crap. So we got to stay healthy as black people, right? So in order to fight these two things, we have to make sure that we have access to healthy foods and our supermarkets, especially the larger chains, don't always have fresh produce for us. So this is beyond an issue of affordability. This is also access, right? Because a lot of people come there like, listen, I have the money, but I go to Pathmark and they just, they just don't have it. Right. Um, so we started this share health program and we have, you know, Ooh, tomatoes, peppers, ginger, thyme, onions, apples, zucchinis, cucumbers, microgreens, um, carrots, celery, uh, eggplant, cauliflower, kale, uh, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, collard greens, just on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. We pack up these boxes and every week boo, we give uh, families um, a box of produce. And it's kind of cool because people like cook up recipes at home and put it on a network or we talk about what we made with it. Uh, so we try to add an education component as well um, to the giveaway. So that, that's always pretty cool. We get a lot of people that comes out to that. Yeah, yeah. There are other people in other communities um, across America that may, may love to do something like this. What would you say their first step is to, to get this out there? To get which out there? The, the, the share health. Yeah, you know, I got into share health because I just started looking up um, who were doing food giveaways mm -hmm. and just messaging them. They just write people. I found that um, other communities have solutions for problems that they don't have mm. um so they you know I, I found that places had an excess of food gotcha. and no one to give it to you know the first time me and diana went out we went to this warehouse um in brooklyn and they had about two thousand pineapples in a warehouse just rotting you know and there's quite uh, and there's pineapples i mean it wasn't like it was beets or, or brussels sprouts it was pineapples who doesn't want pineapples right so it just showed me that there's just we don't have uh, a food problem there's enough food mm -hmm. it's, it's access there's a lot of food waste happening and you know diana really kind of leads our efforts um in 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 that um so i would say start by just hitting people up you know mm -hmm. i went to like Food Bank of America sent them an Instagram message and just started searching hashtags um, on Instagram and just start hitting people up. And we were able to get a whole lot of things quite quickly. Like when I think I contacted the people on Monday, it was like, yeah, come bring a truck on Wednesday. And filled an entire truck full of, wow. you know, the truck feeds, if it's 800 boxes, each box feeds about four or five people. So that, that's just to tell you the yeah. numbers um, that they were, you know, able to give us like that. Cause they, some of them just really had no place to use the food. And they're like, if you can distribute it, please do. That's dope. That's dope. I still wonder why it's a problem to have fresh produce in the supermarket. Have you gotten to the bottom of that? No, um, we have um, written a letter to Stop and Shop most recently mm -hmm. to speak with the the manager or whatever to kind of figure out what what is the problem like why is there no fresh produce why is the produce there um rotten why is it not clean you know um we kind of have to take charge of things in our community because a lot of these store managers don't live here so they don't really understand um and it's our job to tell them yeah people are like oh just drive out to long island but i shouldn't no, have to you shouldn't have to i shouldn't have to and no. what about those that can't you're lucky that you can but what about those that can't we still have to fight for them yeah yeah um i was used to a very poor food quality when i lived in queens yeah. and when i moved to long island um i got introduced to better food quality but even then now i live in georgia and when I initially moved out here, I moved out to an area that is um, upper middle class. And the quality there is way beyond Jeez. what Long Island has. Why? I, I, there are just certain Why? things. I, I don't know. I want to know. Yeah, I want to know. And I want to know who green lights yes. the rotten food to be rotten. put out there. 
rotten, straight up rotten. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you all have pictures up on the Black Resource Network page. Um, what's the hashtag? Uh, SEQ -E Fresh. Yes, SEQ -E Fresh. Yes. Look up the hashtag. Yeah. The food is rotten. Now it's I've been there. It's not. Even out here, I went to a community not too far from here. It's not this community, but another one. Um, and their food was rotten. I went, we went to, it had just opened up and they called it a farmer's market. It's not. Um, and so I'm looking at the, the beef and you know when beef starts getting those colors? That rainbow? Come on now. The, I know that rainbow on the beef. <laughs> and, it, you know, everything's cheap, but it's probably because it's old. Yeah. It's old, and it's this huge place. It's called Nam de Moon. Mm -hmm. It is a Asian farmer's market. It's more, it looks like supermarket to me. Yeah. Um, and it's in the middle of a black community in Jonesboro, Georgia. And I, I want to say I bought a pencil sharpener. Mm -hmm. I just was not going to buy any food from there. My family and I went to go check it out. And I'm like, why is it? It had just opened when we went. I'm like, why is it already rotten? Mm -hmm. you just opened. They're going to take old food from somewhere else. I'm like, oh, we just sell it to them. Is that what They'll happens? I want to know the process. I yeah, want to know who's process, saying so. yes. I want to yeah. know who's putting it out. I want to know if there's a, an, an employee saying this is not right. And then a manager is saying put it out anyway. Yes. <laughs> because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And people are probably getting sick. Yeah. People are getting sick. They are probably. getting sick. Yeah, they are getting sick. Um, and I told, I don't think it was Diana's interview, but a previous interview, I was telling somebody that I used to work at Publix. Have you ever heard of Publix? Of course I know Publix. Okay. Sparta, I know Publix, yeah. It's an awesome supermarket. Yes. Um, and I work there and I watch their process. And if it even, if they even think it's old, they throw it out. They're not going to keep it. So all the food there is fresh. Um and I like the way they do things, but there are certain things that you just don't find anymore, like seeds and fruits. Yes. What, seeds what, and fruits. What happened to that? Yeah. <laughs> They're just, just out. And it's, it's, we, I just want real food. I just want real fresh food. That's it. I asked the guy, I went to Publix yesterday and I asked the produce manager, I said, hey, is it possible? Because you can order food and they'll have it brought oh. in for you at Publix. Um, I said, hey, is it possible you can get me some watermelons and grapes with, seed. with seeds in it? <laughs> yes. He said, no, it's a liability issue. Why, why, what? I guess people are choking on seeds. <laughs> the same reaction I had. I know, okay, I gotta look into that. I didn't hear about it. It's a liability issue. Okay. I'm I'm hoping he didn't know the answer and yeah, he, so he just made something anything. up that happened. Right. Yes. But uh so apparently I can't order a fruit with seeds at Publix. I can order a full size snapper if I'd like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But not a fruit with seeds in it if it comes seedless. Okay. Yeah, that's nuts to me too. <laughs> so what's next on the move for you in general? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, you know, just uh, circling back to something we spoke about earlier, just securing some space uh, for members can, to do what they do. Um, I'm really trying to work on doing some crowdfunding to put our own money together to buy some properties in the community. Okay. That is a good one. Yeah. I mean, they're all good ones. Yeah. But that's a good one. I think that's the, the natural next step for us. Um, so with this property, you'll be doing what with exactly? I think it'll be a multi-purpose space. Um, <laughs> or definitely arts and culture component. Definitely a food component. I think a lot of these um, at-home chefs, Instagram chefs need a space. Um, usually they go out to North Queens and rent commercial kitchen space. I'd love to see something in their community. Um, of course, you know, always to support uh, artists, whether that's music artists or, you know, canvas uh, painting, some kind of art gallery and some kind of a small black small business center. Mm -hmm. Then we can have a small co-working space, a true co-working space, not like shared office space, but that we, gotcha. we work together on, you know, what, what we're doing. And um, I'd love to see something like that happen as well. So a multi, a multi-purpose space is what I'd like to see. That's dope. That's dope. One thing I saw um, in looking at some articles that you were in, when they talked about your um, career in the music business, they multiple people highlighted trial by fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, did they? I don't know. Yeah. You, I haven't looked. I haven't looked at Google in such a long time. Let's talk about that. What does that mean? So, so for me, what that meant, um, because I'm coming from the car industry, right? Okay. Um, so trial by fire in the car industry means really they just put you out there. They really call it throw it to the, throw you to the wolves. Mm-hmm. They, don't, they don't train you mm-hmm. for anything. Um, <laughs> They say you're hired, go sell a car. You don't know how to do the paperwork. You don't know how to greet a customer or anything like that. So I took it as somebody gave you a chance and then then they walked away. That was it. And (laughs) and that's exactly how I I felt like it went. Um, It was kind of like, and go, you're on tour. Okay, what does that mean? Yes, that, that, that very much was my experience. And I learned a lot very quickly. Um, and that's when I learned it wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that you learned a lot very quickly because you wanted to win so bad. And yeah. when, <laughs> when failure is not an option, mm-hmm. you learn really fast. Yeah. Which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lose And We got to change up what it's supposed to be, but I'm not, I'm not going to lose. I'm not mm-hmm. going to be defeated. Mm -hmm. I think that's like one of the keys we were talking about earlier about how to find that, that inner drive Mm -hmm. or to be able to just say yes to yourself Mm -hmm. is, uh, not having an exit strategy. You know, there is none. Right. Yeah. If you have one, how hard are you really going to go? You're always going to look back. Like, I don't have to do this when it hurts. I can just do that. Right. But you have to decide what's the thing you want to do. You have to, that's the first step, decide what you want to do and then, Get the exit sign off the door. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dope, dope. Aaliyah, where can we find you um, and all that you're doing and the multiple platforms that you're on? Sure. You can always find me probably 14 hours a day in the Black Resource Network because I'm always there and I'm always posting and interacting and uh, communicating with my neighbors. Uh, B-L-A-Q-U-E, uh, Black Resource Network. If you need to send me an email, you can send it to info at blackresourcenetwork.com. If you just want to send me, me, Aaliyah Abraham, an email personally, you can send it to A-L-E-E-I-A, Abraham, Aaliyah Abraham at gmail.com. I will write you back. Um, you know, if you want to work on something, you have an idea, you want some advice, you want to find a good restaurant in Queens, hit me up. I'm here for it. If you have young artists, specifically in the Queens neighborhood, that would like to participate in any of my programs, um, I do have a small event coming up on Labor Day for, for families and youth, and we have some youth performers. So if there are any young adult or youth performers out there that want to participate, come on by. If you have some money to give the Black Resource Network, come on by if you just want to send me some money um <laughs> come on by. uh mm-hmm. we're here you know what i mean I'm, I'm pretty easy to find Aaliyah abraham a-l-e-e-i-a hit me up awesome let me ask you about the um youth program real quick sure. so you're teaching young artists about the music industry yeah um where can they they go where is that in queens yeah 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 it's in queens i work out of the studio on jamaica avenue primarily um mm-hmm. So yeah, we just do different different things. We do workshops, we do shows. When we're doing the shows, we try to include the kids in all of the planning aspects. Like, all right, we're gonna go look at these venues. Let's go. Um, you know, all right. So what do you think about this artist? What do you think about that artist? What kind of food would you like to see? You know, we had we do have junior committees anytime we put together events because you can't you can't tell any group of people what they want. You gotta kind of listen to them and hear what mm-hmm. they want. Um, so that's kind of how we do it. Even if like, if I'm taking Sarah to the studio, I'm going to bring John. John's not recording anything, but he could be on this side and understand how to yeah. kind of direct an artist. Um, we just bring him along. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you my last question, but I need to know this first. Sure. You are very busy. <laughs> Ex- extremely busy. Black Resource Network. Um, Quinfest is not happening this year, but you're still working with your students. Yeah. Um, and you have a child. I do. I'm married right. with, a, with a child. And yes. I still have my graphic design and social media marketing business. Yes. 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 Is there any time for Aaliyah? Um, that, that is Aaliyah time. It makes me happy. Good. That, that, is, that is it. I'm, I'm not unhappy with my busy schedule. Um, you know, I make sure that I carve out time for my family and make sure spending time with them as well as including them. Mm-hmm. And what I'm doing is very intentional. Um, um, so I'm... I don't need, there's no other time. What am I going to do? I'm just going to end up planning something. This is yeah. cool. This is my time. Dope, dope. I love it, Aaliyah. Last question. Sure. What is a quote that you live by? 
Okay. Yes. You did say you were going to ask that. Um, yes. <laughs> so I, I have a, a quote. I don't know who said it. Um, but it's, it's something like concentrate or focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. Um, and I definitely live by that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, and what that means is, um, it gets very frustrating trying to fix the things that are not right with you, or you're not very good at. You get more satisfaction on becoming better at the things that you're good at. So you have to align yourself with people who have the opposite, right? So I know, for example, I'm not super organized, right? Um, so I have my husband and he's very, very, very organized. So I know that that's the type of people that I need in my life. And I can spend more time on, you know, I pay close attention to detail and I'm good at bringing people together. And, you know, I like um, speaking engagements and things like that. So I get to spend time on that. So that's the advice that I give people and a quote that I live by. Spend time um, building your strengths um, and don't worry so much about your weaknesses. With some exceptions, of course. Don't do illegal things or anything <laughs> crazy to anybody. But that's a quote that I try to live by. I don't know. I don't know who said it. I don't even know how to look that up. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> that's 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 my quote. That's a dope quote, I, and I agree. I think really, if you focus on your negatives, it may it pulls you down, kind of. It does pull you down, and you get very frustrated and, and defeated when you get so much more satisfaction on just building what you already do well. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much, Aaliyah. We could have done hours, really. <laughs> we could have. Um, but people just need to look you up and follow you and see all the awesome <laughs> things that you're doing. This yes. is just an appetizer yes, <laughs> to who Aaliyah Abraham is. I really appreciate yes. you. And I love, love, love the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I love the work that you're doing as well. And I'm going to go look you up now <laughs> and, uh, you know, figure out how to, to connect with you as well in Georgia. We can connect with anybody anywhere. Would love to. Would love to. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. To just simply start a blog. It's free to start a blog. You can literally get on WordPress or Blogger or whatever without any kind of hosting company and start telling your story and start telling other people's stories. It's really easy. You know, the hard part, I guess, is getting traction, is getting more visibility and getting people to start, you know, taking you seriously and maybe look at it as a career or making money at it. That could be the challenge in part two. But it's really easy to start. Like, just start it. Stop waiting for people to give you permission and stop waiting for people to do it for you or stop letting, waiting for people to let you in the door of their company. Because a lot of these big media companies went online because people were online. People started growing their own and it was just easy for you to just look at your phone and instead of going watching CNN on TV, CNN had to get online. You know what I'm saying? So we are the culture. We make change. So get on, do it, start doing it yourself.